What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Industrial Craft 2. And today guys, we're going to be messing around with using nuclear reactors to generate plutonium. And we're actually going to try and set up an extremely effective way to generate as much plutonium as possible. Now, if you're curious as to why you want to get all this plutonium, there are actually a couple of really effective late game uses for it, such as the radioisotope heat generator or the radioisotope thermoelectric generator. Always a mouthful to say, but also extremely useful. So if you don't know anything about those, I discussed them in my last episode and used the heat generator, but also covered the thermoelectric one. And they essentially are just better versions of pretty much a solar panel that you don't have to you know, do anything to them. You set them up the first time and obviously use plutonium and some you know later game resources for that. And you just let them run and they generate infinite EU per tick or heat units per tick. So those are extremely useful. Uh, you use the plutonium to make the RTG pellets for those, but you can also use it for, I believe it's uh, MOX fuel. I don't know if you call that MOX fuel or something, but it's another type of fuel rod that you can use um, that's more effective. So uh, you can use it for all those different things that are late game. And a lot of people have asked me about setting it up. So we're going to be doing that today. It's an extremely simple setup to make, and it should not take a while to go over. So we do have to do a little bit of crafting. Uh, all this stuff in here is mainly just to craft a new reactor. So what we got to do is we got to craft a bunch of the new uh, just reactor chambers. We got to get nine of them, six for around it and three for actually crafting the center block itself. And then we need to make a generator. Haven't made one of these in a really long time, actually. There we go. So we got that. Now we can actually make the reactor itself once we make this into an advanced circuit. I actually never remember how to make this, so I gotta search it up. I always know how to make most things just because, like, this one's just got a weird pattern around it. I can never remember that it's redstone in the corner. Uh, so we got that, and you know what? Let's, we can just throw it in there. I can show off my knowledge of the patterns. So here we go. I always hate making this dense lead plate, too. This takes a lot of lead to make. Um, which I guess makes sense. But we now got the nuclear reactor, which is great. The reactor chambers for it also great and now really all that we have to do is make the components for it so there's two different types of components you're gonna have to make it's essentially if you want to automate it or if you don't want to automate it and in my case I can't automate it because unfortunately there's no way to actually suck things out of the uh, reactor as far as I'm aware you might be able to use pulling upgrades in some you know tricky setup but I don't know as far as I'm aware, unless you can like put one in the electric sorting machine or something. Um, I guess maybe, no, I, I really can't think of one right now, but there might be a way to automate it that I can't think of. But if you can use any mod that can pull items out, such as, you know, if you're using like Ender IO or pretty much any mod that has uh, a way to pipe items anywhere, you can automate this. And all you're going to have to do is instead of making nine of these overclocked heat vents and that's it, you're going to have to make nine overclocked heat vents and then you're going to have to fill up 18 other slots. So that could be with reactor plating. It could really be with anything. Reactor plating is probably the easiest, but I don't need to do that because I can't automate it. All I have to do is manually switch it in and out. If I wanted to, I could put a hopper on top, fill up all the extra slots and make it so it would automatically deposit the fuel rods in there. But unfortunately, that's not good enough because I have to manually pull the stuff out. So I will continue looking into uh, possible ways to automate it using just IC2, but I've looked into a lot of those and nothing seems to really be paying off. So uh, a little unfortunate, but nothing I can do. Also, it occurs to me now that I made a little bit too many copper plates. I got a little overzealous with the copper plates. We have eight too many. Uh, okay, so we got all these. That's one of the first times that I think I've actually made too many for for crafting. Interesting. I usually just do all the math out so that I don't do that, but I guess I guess I messed up in this episode. But now we will get nine of these. Two of them were already crafted because they were left over from the old reactor. And of course we had made like 28 for the initial nuclear reactor setup, but we're using 26 of those in the current liquid cooled nuclear reactor. So now we've got all the components that we need and we can come over to the fuel rod processing station. Now the last things that I made in here would be fuel rods and I dumped when I was, I didn't have much space left. I dumped a couple of these fuel rods in here and we're gonna be using only single fuel rods for this one. And this one per cycle, which I think is roughly a little bit under three hours, we'll be able to process uh, 27 fuel rods. I've seen a couple that can process a total of like 23 um, that generate more power using dual fuel rods, 
but we're not going for power we're just going for uh, plutonium so we're going to process as many of these as possible so we can grab these out of here but we're going to need 27 of them i don't care that these are a little bit used up but we've got 9 10 11 12 13 so we need 14 more so i did get some iron we can just craft a bunch of them in here is all the stuff from processing the fuel rods that we used to get the plutonium from last episode and it actually pretty much started overflowing into the internal buffer in here um okay so you can't i was curious if you could add a pulling upgrade to this to see if i could use this to pull stuff out of the uh, nuclear reactor but you can't but we can just grab some of this uranium and we can throw it all in here so i believe that should be good Oh wait, we don't use that. What am I doing? What am I doing? We don't use this uranium. We need to make the enriched uranium. So we need we need the tiny piles of uranium. So we might actually Can I turn regular uranium into tiny piles? Possibly. Or do I need to process more? Got to get this I got to get that out of there first and we got to come over here. Where is this going? It's going somewhere in here. Oh, it's going to this chest over here. That's where it is. Okay. So we got to go and craft the enriched uranium first. Uh, so that was like this and then these in the center. So unfortunately, we're actually not going to be able to make enough for this full setup. Let me see if we can. Okay, guys, so we are back and I actually had to go off camera and get some more uranium because unfortunately I wasn't able to scavenge my base and find any old fuel rods uh, or at least wasn't able to find enough to get us to the 27 we need. So I did just set up the miner, go and go AFK for a little bit and I got just enough to make i believe that's supposed to say 31 there really should be a better way to read that but unfortunately there is not so it should be 31 we probably have roughly was that one okay so we got 36 sitting in my inventory there might be one or two others around the base but we have the 27 that we need to set this thing up so now it's time to go downstairs and actually construct it which is probably the easiest part of this whole thing it is not a complicated setup now initially when i dug this part out I dug these blocks out right over here and it was flipping me out with my OCD because there was no center block and I'm sure all of you guys can relate to that because you all play Minecraft and that means that you inherently have OCD. Uh, that's one thing that I've learned is pretty much everyone that plays has OCD when it comes to symmetry and stuff. Um, except that one time that Etho was like, I don't want to make a symmetrical building. I want to make one that's not symmetrical because I want to be weird. Um, that bothered me so much. But we're going to put it right here. This is where the center block is going to be. So. I'm going to mine out the roof here because we do need a little bit of extra space because it's essentially taking up a 3x3x3 three by three by three or I mean that's that's what it would take up if it was a square but it's not. Uh, it's a weird plus shape. Three dimensional plus shape. Unfortunately we don't even have enough. We don't even have enough for the, making the ceiling. We're one short. Oh my gosh. Here's what we do. I know that there's a block somewhere around here that they don't need they don't need that block right there so boom boom there we go so now we can make it uh so let us get our nuclear reactor out we got to throw a random block down first so that we can actually put this up there it's a little dark right here let's just throw a torch down so we got to throw that down we get the nuclear reactor block get all the reactor chambers around it that's one thing that bothers me and i, I mean it makes sense but like you can't throw down the reactor chambers unless you have the actual reactor there uh okay there we go so we got the nuclear reactor that freaked me out for a second because Wayla said that that was just a generator in the center so that, that was that worried me a little bit but so what we can do is start throwing these fuel rods in here and the setup goes like so so i guess i should use now nah, we'll, we'll use the partially used up ones uh, in the first batch because we might as well uh it doesn't matter if they run out at the same time or not but you essentially are just going to set it up like this. So you leave one space in between all these, just doing a checkerboard pattern like so. And there you go. That is 27 of them. And what you can do now is take these overclocked heat vents and go like this. And then you skip over and you do it in the center like this. And then you skip over to the far side and you do it like this. Now, if you were using... Uh, an automated setup you would want to fill in all of these empty spaces 
And that is because when you're draining out the fuel rods and putting new ones in, you wanna make sure that you're able to suck out the fuel rods and only replace things in the position that the fuel rods are in so that you don't cause a meltdown if you're not transferring heat properly throughout your system. If you know I were to start putting fuel rods in on this one and didn't have these empty spaces filled up, this thing would melt down because the heat would not get transferred enough from certain blocks like this one or you know this one over here, right here. Like It would cause a meltdown, so be careful about that. Um, I know a lot of people will use reactor plating, like I said, if you find that's cheaper, or you can use other stuff if you really want. Any components that are not going to be generating heat or transferring it in a weird way should be fine. But we actually do need to go make a lever now just because I wanna be able to flip this thing on and it will generate power. I am going to hook it up to, I don't even know what I wanna hook it up to yet to be honest because we have 40 million EU uh, already backed up in our mfsu and i'm not even using that i didn't do what i said i was going to do and charge my suit up because i still have the hazmat suit on so we're essentially getting nothing over here for burning the uh fuel rods in this system but uh, we could make a little bit more of this um uu matter which is going in here and uh going up very slowly because we no longer have a reactor hooked up to this so i guess we could do that so let us throw on the lever make sure that I'm not lying when I say that this won't blow up. So flip that on there. The core temp should not go up at all. Only 135 EU. Now th the reason that you make setups like this is because um, a regular reactor would give you plutonium. You will be able to get plutonium from it, but it's not gonna get you as much in the amount of time. Now you can't like speed up the processing of these fuel rods, but what you can do is you can fit more in one nuclear reactor uh, in, in a safer way so right now we're fitting 27 in here that's a lot that you can fit in there but they're not you know si they're not lined up next to each other so they're not uh, more effective so this is a really ineffective way of using uranium for power but you're getting plutonium at a faster rate so it really is up to you whether or not you want to use the setup that i talked about i think in like episode 10 where it's more effective at getting power for you but gets less plutonium or if you want to use this one which gets you plutonium you can do either one a lot of people set up both it's you know it's really up to you but this one's really cheap to set up and then you can go and use the plutonium for either generating heat like we are over here which is working like a charm or generating 64 eu per tick uh, passively from the thermoelectric generator. So I guess what I can do is just take, uh, we don't even need gold cable, where'd my copper cable go? We can hook up the copper cable and just send it right on over here. We actually probably want to use gold for this right here though, because it's going to start getting, yeah, we'll just, eventually I'll replace it all with gold, but uh, this will go up a little bit faster now, a little bit, very small amount. Uh, considering this is basically nothing but you can see the core temp isn't going up none of these are fluctuating and these will slowly go down i believe it's like two hours and 45 minutes every time you run nuclear reactors for the lifespan of these um and that'll get you 27 of the fuel rods and that'll get you let's just take a look now because why not so we got the fuel rods we can go look at the uses for this one uh it's to craft the oh we need the used up ones we need the used up ones depleted uranium so it'll get you one tiny pile of plutonium and the iron dust back and some of the uranium back that you used meaning that this whole thing will get you three plutonium every two and three quarters hours roughly uh which is one rtg pellet which is not too bad uh that means that if you were to run this for a day straight you'd be able to fill up an entire thing so you know it's pretty good so uh, i will keep you guys posted on this whole process right here we'll keep track of that and my plan is to pretty much fill up a room with radio isotope uh thermoelectric generators and pretty much just hook all of those up to this mass fabricator and let this thing run solely off of that and the rest of the power will go to an internal buffer in my base so i'm interested to see how far i can actually push that eventually once i get maybe like three full ones i'll start moving over to those being the things that power the mass fabricator and move this whole system into its own room but thank you guys for watching i know today was a little bit of a shorter episode but a lot of you guys have hopefully noticed that i'm uploading i uploaded two days in a row which is very odd for me that is because if you didn't quite catch it in the last couple episodes i am done with my first year of college for all of those uh that are curious it went quite well i believe that i am on track this semester to get like a 3.35 which for some majors isn't great, but for a chemical engineering major, I will gladly take it. Uh, it means I'm pretty much averaging between a B and an A, um, and that should make my overall GPA roughly like a 3.15, 3.2. 
Um, so I'm happy with that. Uh, if you guys were curious, the chem exam I was worried about, I got an 81 on. I know someone asked about that. And although an 81 is not ideal for me for a grade for an exam, the average across all the classes, the highest average was a 63. So, um, so many people fail general chemistry at my college that they actually uh, are curving the final grade for the class almost 10 points, which means I'm going to get an A. So, Yep, that's enough rambling for me, though. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful in any way, feel free to give it a like, and I will talk to you guys later.